In part one of our New York vlog series, we show you where to stay, how to get around, we visit the financial district, the 9-11 memorial and Times Square, we take a ride on the Staten Island Ferry, and we visit some great pubs too. Right then. Oh, right then. <laughs> it's 5.30 in the morning, and Polly Morgan's out of bed because we're going to the airport. Here starts our New York vlogs. Ooh, I'm excited. Paul is still sleepy. Ooh. So come on, let's get to the airport and go. Let's go. <laughs> exclusive Carol has trusted me to carry the passports but only for about two minutes <laughs> after another fabulous Virgin Atlantic flight we touch down in New York City station for the next seven nights right then so we've arrived and we're staying at the Hyatt House Hotel. So that was good, wasn't it, Paul? Hey, I'm walking here. <laughs> yeah, a lot, so of traffic, good, lot, lot of traffic. traffic. Right. That's taken us about half an hour, hasn't it? Yeah. We looked at Uber, and the Uber quoted about $103, but we've just been in a taxi, and it cost us 82 So make sure you just go to the official yellow cab sign in the airport, and you'll be good. Isn't that yeah, right, Paul? Yeah, that's right, yeah. But don't, there's tons and tons of people there. Do you want a taxi? Do you want a taxi? Don't listen to yeah. any of them. Get in the proper taxi queue, and then you won't get ripped yeah. off. So um, here we are. So let's go in and see if we can book in. So we're on, look, on floor 21 of my sister Jane's on 22. So she's even higher. See you shortly. So we've got, we are 2101. So to your right, it's just there. 2101. So that's very handy, Harry, for the lift, isn't it? There's the keys. So this is going to be our home for the next seven nights. So, um,. Ooh. Oh, I can't, get, I can't get the case from if you don't mind driving that one. And that lift one. it by the hand, was. You know what I told you, you naughty girl. He's telling me off already. Yeah. But look at this. Not huge, but we didn't expect that. We knew the room wasn't going to be very big. Um, but look at a fab sized bed. And we've got like a corner window. So let's have a look out here. A little chair. Let's see what the view's like. Oh, that's not bad. Oh, we're quite high up, look. Oh, there's the Empire State Building. Oh. Oh, wow. Oh, this is exciting. Oh, a bit emotional, Paulie. Well, Isn't it's, that lovely? Because in the taxi, car kept saying, oh, there's the Empire State Building there. But because I was the other side of the taxi, I could see nothing. Oh. Couldn't see nothing. Nothing. So, yeah, so that's awesome. So, yeah, so we're here for seven nights. So we're going to just get settled in. Uh, suss out the Wi-Fi. It's free and it's uh, got no password, apparently. So we're going to sort that out, get settled in, get freshened up and start exploring. So we've come to explore uh, this area here. Look at this. Oh, wow. Ooh. Awesome. Look at that. You can walk all the way around, I think. Can you? No, just to here. But this is a little sort of viewing area just outside the gym.
Right then, so loving the hotel room so far. So our first impressions of a Hyatt hotel in New York. Good? It's a, yes, I mean, we, it's exactly what we need. It's not um, the plushest hotel on the planet, but it does everything that it says on the tin. It does. And what I'm loving is there's this little chair um, just by the window here. And looking out over the view, it's maybe it took me back to 1990 when I worked as a well was invited to work with Celebrity Cruises as one of their nurses, and I had to get embarked the ship on in New York. And I remember thinking, oh, this is such an exciting opportunity. So I thought, yeah, I'm going to go for it. Got on the plane, arrived in New York on my own, and then I was staying. I was put in a hotel called the Lexington Hotel. And I remember just being there and thinking, I was like on the 50 something floor, I'm sure it's, it was so high, looking down out over in New York thinking, oh my gosh, what have I done? How scary is this? But as soon as I got on the ship, um, I had an amazing time. So if you ever click, uh, have any opportunities to, to work on cruise ships, I definitely recommend it because it's a, such a fabulous experience. Anyway, back to Hyatt House and um, just to, the view. Just to give you some idea of how many hundreds of years ago, Black Box was riding high in the charts with Ride on Time. That's how long ago it was. <laughs> Yeah, and there was no way to um, communicate. The internet wasn't there then, was it? It was. It was just a. But anyway, great you experience. Were, you had your own little pigeon, didn't you? You should yeah, tell pigeon. To, 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 to I've note. still got the letters that my mum wrote to me, oh, uh, which is just lovely. So anyway, back to New York in the Hyatt Hotel. So we thought, right, let's go and just explore what's around the area, so the hotel, so that we know what's on offer. There's a Seven Eleven just across from the street, so that's always brilliant, isn't it? To grab just, just across the street. It is, yeah, on 6th Avenue. But you said just across from the street. Did I? Yes. Um, so we went in there, so we've got a fridge in our room, so we've got some nice cold water. We bought a few snacks, we do like our crippers, don't we, Paul? Yes, but my crisps have remained unopened. And mine. No way. It's my sister that said... Oh, she's a big... <laughs> I thought Carol was a crisp monster. Jane, ah! Jane her, she like, takes it to the next level. So we're on 6th Avenue and 28th Street. So we thought, let's have a walk down 6th Avenue, which is the Avenue of the Americas. Try and uh, go down to sort of 30, uh, 3rd Street, 34th Street, see the Empire State Building, sort of do a big square new york i'm i'm notorious for getting lost in new cities and actually i've got my head around new york's just in little squares paul's not he tried to uh, take us down the wrong way didn't you yesterday <laughs> but anyway um so we had a great wander and then paul spotted a pub i did the jack dempsey pub now obviously any boxing fans will know that jack dempsey was considered one of the best pound for pound boxers definitely of his era if not of all time but he was around I believe it was about 1917 or something I don't know but lots of memorabilia up on the wall uh, me and Jane was enjoying some Modelo which is now uh, the number one selling beer in America mm. despite the fact this is Mexican beer is now overtaken Budweiser after their debacle where they lost two billion dollars um, and Medela is now the number one and Carol had um, a Sauvignon Blanc and when she got the bottle out the fridge and it was like a four pint bottle I not didn't, me I didn't get the bottle I, I, the I didn't um, hold up much hope that it, that it was going to be any good but it, it was, was nice, nice. Yeah. 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 so, so we had a good mooch we sat in there didn't we and just uh, rest our, our weary limbs because we've been up since uh, five in the morning haven't we and then we had a good walk around it's busy it's gritty it's noises there's sirens it is everything that you imagine yes. new york to be isn't it so your first impressions it's a bit like being on a film set isn't it, it is and you look around there's familiar things well there was for me because there was carol and her sister jane <laughs> so, I mean, like... so we had a good walk around yeah. and then we thought oh we're hungry so we found um, a lovely little restaurant just around the corner from our hotel. Yeah, so this little restaurant was, was called AK9 or K9 Sushi. And we thought, well, let's Say have... Say again, honey. No. Say it again, go on. AK9 Sushi. So we thought, let's have a look, because we're not sushi fans, but we do love sort of a Japanese-type, uh, Korean-type food. We weren't sure exactly what it was, was it? So we um, went in there, a lovely lady came straight away. Have a look at the menu, and it had stuff on there. I spotted the himachi chicken straight away. Paul spotted the tempura shrimp, and Jane spotted a katsu curry. So we thought, right, this is perfect. We'll sit down and uh, have a bite to eat. And it was fantastic, it was wasn't good, it, Paul? Yeah, right? very good. We had some salt and pepper chicken to start, and the meal came out. And we thought, normally... the meals would be quite small wouldn't they yeah. for if you'd order that at home in the uk but it was huge it was wouldn't massive. it so we keep forgetting that when you come to america the meals we 
Rookie mistake again. We should have ordered two meals between the three of us and just got a side plate. So and I, um, had, um, I had shrimp and vegetable tempura. And I have to say, some of the vegetables that were tempura I we didn't, didn't even know, know what we they didn't were. Know what they were. What I think of... that one might have been artichoke, you know. Oh, I don't know. I, the only one I could recognise was um, broccoli. <laughs> Other well, that is that, easy to Yeah, easy to recognise. But other than that, the, the, well, I can't know yeah. what half it was. But it was very good. Yeah, it was all good, yeah. Yeah, but apart from that one artichoke bit. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so if you are uh, round the ear of Hyatt House, then check that restaurant what's, out. And what's it called again, just for the people? AK9 Sushi. Feeling very tired and very full, we headed back to the hotel. We watched a bit of telly and Carla, I'll say we watched a bit of telly. Carol was out like a light, like she'd been hit with an anvil. And um, and I did. I managed to prop my Insta360 up and put it into time-lapse mode. Yes. And I managed to prop it because our window opens like a little bit. And I managed to prop it in the window. And I thought I'd do a lovely little time-lapse of things going down, you know, street-wise. And then I fell asleep. So I don't know how many hours it was going for, but it was a good job because even though it was going for hours and hours and hours, the time lapse is less than 50 seconds, isn't it? So it was a good job, really. Good morning from New York. Oh, it's been so exciting, hasn't that it? That was a funny high voice, wasn't it? Was it? Good morning from New York. Oh, we're so excited to be in this city. Look at this view. Well, I will show you. Well, look at it now, but I will show you a fabulous time lapse that I took this morning as the sun was coming up. So check this out. talking so quiet. It's so sad. Why? Because Harry Kane's left Tottenham. Oh yeah, Harry Kane's left Tottenham. Paul's in um, mourning. Oh. That's not, you know, oh. this is about New York, Paulie, isn't it? Oh, I'm sure this is going to cheer me up, but <laughs> I'm sure because he watches all our videos, so I just want to thank you, Harry, for all your amazing service. <laughs> yes. So we're off out. Very exciting, actually, because we are meeting up with one of our patrons, Kevin, who lives in New York um, and has offered to come and uh, meet us and show us some of the sights. This is obviously Kevin, who I just explained to you in the room, who's come to meet us <laughs> to have a, a day out in New York. Yeah. So fun, fun, fun. Right then, so after meeting Kevin, we thought, let's go out and explore. And one of the ways that we wanted to get around while we're in New York is by using the subway. Uh, the one reason is because I thought it was going to be really scary. I the just wanted is, to try it. I just wanted yes. to experience it for ourselves. And because we had a local with us, Carol felt, felt very safe. more safe. Yeah. So um, we get to our, there's no uh, manned ticket booths anywhere, which is, seems to be the way of the world now. So, but there's plenty of machines. Your options are, you can use a debit card, you've got your pad, to get into the station, you know, where you've got your turn style thing. Now, if you just want to pay as you go, every time you enter a station, it costs you $2.75. But it doesn't matter how far you go, as long as you don't come out again, you can travel around all day for 275 but if you've got a specific area you want to go to right we want to go to there and we want to spend some time there then we want to come back that's going to cost you five and a half dollars now obviously we want to do plenty of mooching around so kevin said well what you do if you get like a seven day unlimited travel it's 33 dollars for seven days but the first time you buy your ticket which is this little fella here there's a one dollar charge mm. now once you've got this ticket you can top it up as much as you want. So always, even if you are if you think you're gonna be coming back to New York, keep your card, because it'll save your dollar admin fee and you can just top up as you go. Mm. So, we made our purchases. We did, so it was $33 plus the one. It was $1. Yeah, plus. so yeah. that's the way we choose. So anyway, so we got down to the subway station and do you know it was very simple? Uh, it's very much like the uh, London Tube, if you're familiar with that. The only thing that's a bit different is you've got to get your downtown and uptown into your head. It's not north and south. But if you look at the map, uh, which you'll see here, it's very straightforward. You've got different coloured lines and the different um, initials and we easily found our way to uh, the area which we needed to Go to get to the 9-11 memorial area which is what we wanted to do first. Mm -hmm. 
So our journey from 28th Street to Cortland Street took about, what, 20 minutes? Yes. Uh, so we got off at Cortland Street and literally that's about, what, four or five minute walk? Not even that. Not even that. To actually where you come across the, the World Trade Centre and you come to see first the memorial pools, isn't it, Paulie? Yeah, there's two. Which is very, very emotional. Yeah, it's basically like these two, they're like sort of infinity waterfalls. Obviously we can put a little insert in here so you know what we're talking about. But all around this massive infinity sort of waterfall pool thing, is engraved all the names of the people that lost their lives whether they were on actually on the plane or in the building or firemen or you know other yeah. other first responders and it is it's um it's well it's it's really really hard to explain well, let's show you some pictures the two reflecting pools are in the exact place where the twin towers once stood they are approximately one acre in size and are 45 feet deep making them the largest man-made waterfalls in North America. So after walking around the pools and just obviously with our own thoughts, we th we um, was talking to Kevin and he said, well, you can either go to the booth to get the tickets or I can do it online. So uh, Kevin basically got it on his phone, got it online. It was $33 per ticket, uh, which enables you to get into the um, museum and also into the ex exhibition. If you want to do tours, um, guided tours, that does cost extra. Um, I'll put the, the link here for the, the website where you can get tickets. Uh, but it was very simple. Kevin got it on his phone. You're allocated as a time slot. Ours was 11.30. Um, and then we were told, just come back at 11.30 and you will be allowed to join the queue. The queue wasn't crazy. Um, the, well, the queue, you look at it initially and the queue looked quite big, but it just moved so yeah, fast. It it's so it Everything was just ran so efficiently in yeah. no time at all you're inside. And then obviously once you're inside, it tells the story from on a timeline, basically, doesn't it, of, yeah. of how things occurred. And um, and we, there's not... I didn't take a huge amount of photos. I didn't think that was totally appropriate to do. Uh, but also there's areas which you can't take photos and videos. But here are a few of the images of of what we experienced during that day. But it was very thought-provoking. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So as you can see, there's a lot of um, artefacts from that time. The storytelling, the, there's uh, voiceovers as well, where, when you're going through of stories of phone calls and gosh, you know. Yeah, I mean, one of the, um, one of the phone calls they've got is actually somebody that was in the second tower and they'd phoned their wife just to say that um, oh, there's something happening in the other tower, blah, 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 we can see smoke, there's this, that and the other. Then he phoned back again, say, oh, um, yeah, they're saying that the plane might have hit it, but oh, we're all safe here, I'll speak to you later. He phoned her back again just to sort of give her an update and said, I'll speak to you later. But yeah. unfortunately, he didn't speak to her later. It so was I'd very, say, very, yeah. a definitely must do. As you can probably tell from Carol, the emotions definitely running high when you're walking around there, and you see like just the atrocities that took place. That um, there was uh, on that day that there was 2,977 people died, but it was not just those people on that day because tens of thousands of people have died from the effects of the of, of the stuff they uh, breathed in on that day. I mean, 
psychological psychological issues for um, first responders and anybody that did manage to get out. So it's it, it's it's just not about that day. It's it's yeah. about you know we're 22 years later now and it's still you know for some people it's like it happened yesterday and it, it yeah. is it's just well I know it sounds bad saying you, you need to go there because it was you know it was quite horrible in parts but you yes, need to go you there you do need to go there and the, the memory of this needs to be kept alive to make sure that nothing like this ever happens again so after that very thought-provoking and sombering uh, time at the 9-11 Museum, we decided we needed to go to the pub, didn't we? Because uh, we were all deep in thought and, and just felt like, come on, let's um, let's go and just sit and chat with Kevin, who had had a chance to really catch no, up with very much. We definitely needed some cheering up, that was for sure. We did. Just across uh, from the uh, memorial area is a pub called O'Hara's. There's full of um, badges from all over the world from different fire stations, yeah. isn't it? And a great atmosphere in there. And we had a lovely guy um, serving us who was just a really good laugh, wasn't it? A, a proper New Yorker with the accent, yeah. wasn't it? And it was just, um, that, as soon as we got in there, uh, we thought, right, you know, that, that's, that f we felt like we were back on, um, back on track. And we decided to have a little bite to eat, so I had a grilled cheese sandwich, which was delicious, and you went for a big burger, didn't you? I had a big bacon cheeseburger on it, on, on his recommendation, it was very good. Yeah. What Paul didn't like, though, was he'd been trying some different um, beers, haven't you? Well, not beers, lagers. But they had, like, Coors Light and a few things like that. Coors doesn't like drinking out of bottles much, do you? I know cans. I don't like cans, I don't. I really like Modelo, which is now the number one selling beer in the US which is a Mexican beer, and when we were in Las Vegas, uh, Bob from Innocence Abroad introduced us to Modelo, and me and Carol's sister Jane both like it. Yeah. But they didn't have a Modelo, so they bought us out this beer, which was a sort of quite a dark beer, which we didn't mind too much, and then... It was called Coney Island, wasn't it? No, that was called... Oh, uh, Ying Ling Ling, Yu Ling. Yu Ling, which Yu is what... Yu Ling Ling. Yeah, like what she said, <laughs> yeah. I mean, fair play. I mean, you couldn't have made more of a pig's ear, that, could you? Um, so, me and Jane had one of those, Carol had a wine which was lovely, and Kevin was drinking... Coors Light. Coors Light. And well, me and Jane's drinking, he was like, oh, it's all right. And then he came out and he says, all right, so, well, no, I think we'll try something else this time. And they just bought out, and it looked exactly like a normal pint of lager. Yes, and like said, a light, I golden said, Yeah, like a golden, like the amber nectar, as the Australians would say. So I said, well, I would like one of those. And, Ka and Jane said, oh, me too. And it came out, and it was an IPA which is an Indian pale ale, which has all become the rage again now. It used to be like a proper old man's drink back in the day, but now they're all, all these different beers are making a comeback. I had a sip of it, and it was, and it was like lemon. <laughs> and, and I said, make this taste of lemon. Oh yeah, it's an IPA infused with lemon. Citrus. I'm sorry, but like whoever thought that was a good idea, they need a slap, don't they? It was hot, I couldn't even Do you drink know, it. I had a sip of it and I don't like lager, but I actually quite liked it. Oh, I couldn't drink it. And to be fair, he, the guy came across and he, and he said, yeah, he said, like, you're not like that. I said, no, I said, I can't drink it, honestly. I said, I cannot drink it. He said, oh, I'll swap it for something else. So he bought me, um, I think he did, I then had a Coors Light, but a draft one. Yes. And that was all right. But yeah, but it was so, so much fun. It was everything that I hoped being in a New York Irish, Irish bar, bar would be. Would be. Yeah, I it was, totally it was agree. Fab. So as we were downtown in the business district, we thought, let's uh, do the Staten Island, Staten Island Ferry, uh, which is totally free, which is, you don't see things that are free, do you, when you come no. on a city trip? So we, ha we had a walk. Um, Kevin showed us the New York Stock Exchange and uh, Wall Street and that sort of area, and we went to see the bull, the big big brass bull isn't it but you can't get near the bull because there's all these people wanting to get photos you manage to sneak some some shots but there's people at the front end you think oh just smiling and there's people at the end that are just holding the bull's balls having their photos taken and it was all a bit bizarre I, <laughs> when we put some pictures on of this ball it's featured in lots of films. And one of the films I remember it featured in, which Carol hasn't seen, but they did a remake of The Sorcerer's Apprentice with Nicolas Cage. And in the film, I'm sure that this bull came to life because it was like a sort of witchcrafty, wizardry type film. But like, I found it really disconcerting that we're trying to take pictures and there's adults sending their children up, five, six, seven-year-old children, sending them up to cup the genitalia <laughs> of, of the bull so they can take a picture of their child doing that yeah now, I, I, 
I Maybe don't it's think, a good luck thing. I don't think you're going to win Parent of the Year for that sort of thing. <laughs> oh, look, Nanny, there's me Odin, Odin of Bulls Balls. So it was all, and the queue to do the balls bit was far yeah, longer. Yeah, it was long, yeah. The, there was less people anyway. wanting the face than wanted the, the, yeah, uh, the rear end. We then walked through some gardens, which um, Kevin was telling about this often. We love uh, crime things, US crime shows, don't yeah. we? And Law and Order, is uh, this was the park, the little area, where they often sit chatting, don't it they? It was the original right back in the start yeah. of Law and Order, when it was... Um, you know, I mean, it's been going for about 30 years now, I think, yeah. but it's still going now. But yeah, he said, this is the little park. And as soon as he said, we knew yeah. what he was talking about. And it was, yeah, and it was that's the thing fun. about New York. Wherever you look, things are, they're iconic, aren't they? The things that you've seen in yeah. films. And it's just, oh gosh. So that was good. So, and then we found the Staten Island Ferry, which was very easy to find. New York's a lot more walkable in areas than I thought it yeah. would be. The, the blocks aren't huge. I mean, you're still doing a lot of steps. But anyway, back to the Staten Island Ferry. So we got into the terminal there, which um, there were with a lot of other people, and uh, we waited about 20 minutes, wasn't it, before the the it comes every half it goes 24 hours too. So you could, if you wanted to do a sunset one or an evening one, uh, it's a commuter uh, ferry for people who live on. Lots of people live on Staten Island and commute to the city, don't they? So um, I'm sure you said commute to the city. Commute, no, I, no. commute. So and, anyway, so and it's people only, no cars. That's right. Yeah. The big ferries, so they take on the one deck, it can hold 1500 people, and there was three decks, wasn't there? Yeah. So, anyway, so we got on there, got a seat outside, um, and it just gets packed, which is fine because it's free. But it gives you, uh, well, we'll show you here that there's some of the sights uh, that we've seen on the Staten Island ferry. Up and get back in the race, that's why. <laughs> Right, we're waiting for the Staten Island Ferry, so we're just about to go here. The Staten Island Ferry was founded in 1817, when the Richmond Turnpike Company started a steamboat service from Manhattan to Staten Island. Staten Island Ferries are now owned by the City of New York, and it's free to ride. But beware of scammers trying to sell you tickets, as no tickets are required. It's the ideal way to see Manhattan and the Statue of Liberty, but make sure you head straight outside to the right hand side of the ferry for the best views, and obviously on the way back head to the left. The journey, which is 5.2 miles, takes approximately 25 minutes. There are currently 10 vessels in operation, working 24 hours a day, 7 days a week and they leave approximately every 20 minutes during peak times.
back off the ferry, Kevin said, oh, there's, a, there's like a bar or a restaurant area just around the corner called The View. Mm. And you can sit there and you can... They got quite, they've got quite a high fence up for some reason. He said, but they used to be able to see lots of stuff. So it shouldn't be called The View now. It should be called... The Harris Fence. The, yeah, The Fence. <laughs> You can't really see a lot. Oh, but we went in there. But it was still well, nice. We, I say we went in there. I don't know if you remember Dory out of Finding Nemo. <laughs> well, the woman on the counter who was the like the maitre d', she was obviously Dory out of Finding Nemo <laughs> because she said, "Oh, um, yeah, can, can I have some? Yeah, we just uh, just uh, four for drinks, please. Oh, okay, do you want food? No, four for drinks, please. Okay, well, I'll just go in and I'll sort something out. Without exaggeration." She was gone 15 minutes. And we're thinking, like, what? So after about 15 minutes, she walked out and looked at us <laughs> like she'd never seen us before in her life and said, uh, yes, can I help at all? Um, yeah, we, we want drinks, please. Oh, is it four of you, is it? I said, yeah, still four of us. So, like, oh, my God, I thought, well, it? Uh, she did it with a smile, though. <laughs> Yeah, but I don't even think Paul's she knew what to do. Paul's got no patience whatsoever. No patience whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, she was like... She was, <laughs> anyway, she we went in. She wasn't great for business. <laughs> We went in and we said we're happy to sit by the bar. So we sat by the bar and we just chatted with Kevin, who's been. Thank you, Kevin, for taking the time to come and meet us because we've had such a great time with you. Yeah, uh, lovely, time. lovely guy. Kevin's one of our patrons, so if you want to know more about uh, being a patron, then just look in the description below. But Kevin being the best didn't end there. Yes. He said we were talking about pizza. Yes. And he said the worst pizza in New York will still be the best pizza anywhere else. And I thought, well, that's a brave statement. He said, right, would you want some pizza? We're like, yes, yes we, we do. do, yes, we do. He said, right then. He said, I'll arrange an Uber and I'll take you to one of the best spots in New York for some pizza. Yeah. Which happened to be right in theatre land. It did, in the theatre district, just off Broadway. So, uh, and it was called John's Pizzeria. Pizza Pizzeria. And I have to say, mm -mm -mm. it was fabulous. It was. We had, because I'm greedy piggy poorly. He said, so what do you want to do then? And you can have this large pizza, which is cut in twice. You get two pieces each. We thought two pieces each. That'd be plenty for the normal human being. Paul's like, well, only two. I'm like, let's start with two. And if you want more, we can order more. And so what we thought we would do, you had your set pizzas, or you could just have like a normal... Um, cheese and tomato and then add your own toppings so we add pepperoni and meatballs mm. right then so we are in John's Pizzeria which apparently is the best pizza in New York and I thought Morgan well don't ask me because I've never been here before no <laughs> but Kevin says it is I would never dare say the best but it's very good yes but look at this so we've ordered a uh, how many inches is that Many. <laughs> Many. <laughs> it didn't say. It was about 24, isn't no, it? No, it, did, it didn't, didn't say. It didn't quote an inch. It's just eight pieces. Was eight, eight slices. Eight slices. Eight slices between four of them. So, so we're going to tuck in there and let you know. Right then. So Paul has been taught how to... The, the secret is you have to fold it in half. And then... Yes. And then you do that and then you stick it straight in your cake hole. Yeah, do it then. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Yeah, it is. It's absolutely delicious. Mm -mm. I have to say, it was spectacular. It was. The tomato, the tomato sauce on the base yeah. I've never ever tasted a sauce. It was like a really it. juicy, tasty pizza. Was, I'm not a huge uh, pizza fan. I wouldn't that wouldn't what I choose to eat at home. I'm not a big fan at all. But that, the tomato sauce, uh the dough that they use, apparently the water in New York is really good for making pizza yeah. dough, is what we've been told. So um but yeah, so get yourself to John's Pizzeria. Uh it was absolutely yeah. fun. And not that expensive, it was twenty four dollars, wasn't it, for that pizza plus your toppings. So I think it was about thirty dollars for an eight piece yeah, pizza between four of you, yeah, so, yeah and it was a lovely little setting wasn't it yeah. um and fa fabulous service we had a drink there um and it was it was great it was fabulous 
Now, by then we were all feeling a bit weary because we'd been out nearly 12 hours, hadn't we, sort of walking around New York. Uh, but uh, Kevin said, look, we'll head back towards the areas that we need to be in to put all get home. He said, but how about just walk around the corner, there's Times Square, and whilst you're here, it's going to be all lit up. It's Saturday night. It was about half past nine, ten yeah. by then, wasn't it? Let's go. And oh, my God, Times Square at night is just bonkers. It's the, just all these the LED lights everywhere and the screens and just people. A fabulous atmosphere actually but you need to be you just need to be very savvy with your belongings yeah. because you did feel there was a little bit of um i'm well, sure just about every person on the planet seemed to be in Times square at the they same did. time as us so yeah i was very because i had a backpack on i was very i knew you say we well, shouldn't wear a backpack so today i'm going to be purchasing something which he's is going to have some on the front. he's going to get a new bag yeah only because she won't carry stuff anymore i don't know I carry enough. Yeah. But anyway, um, back to Times so, Square. Yes. So it was absolutely amazing. Yeah. Like you said, it was just an assault. On your senses. On all your senses. Smell, yeah. taste, whatever. It was all going on there. Um, like I said, the, the neon lights. There is a constant um, supply of those sort of rich, like push bike with music um, blasting. Rickshaws, they're all going yeah. around. It was all going on. And I have yeah. to say, it was. Um, it was, it was enjoyable it for was, us for about 20 yeah. minutes and then we were like oh let's get someone to buy it yeah. won't we so kevin needed to get back to a certain uh, train station we needed to walk back to our hotel so we headed back down uh, towards sixth avenue which leads on to our 28th street where we're staying at the hyatt house hotel which uh, we will be doing a full review so make sure you you check that out too so um and it took us what about 35 40 minutes a walk which actually from Times square to here we thought actually wasn't wasn't too bad so we said our farewells to kevin and we headed back to the hyatt house and we, it was just the end we we all looked at each other do you know that this has been a really good day good we have day. seen so much and uh, with kevin's company that just made that was the icing on the cake wasn't and it join us in part two of our new york vlog series where we show you more of the city that never sleeps